For the past few years, Unity has been working on a native multi-threaded workflow known as the c -sharp job system. This allows developers to easily implement custom and safe multi-threaded code without having to worry about race conditions, CPU deadlocks, or resource contention, where there are more threads created than what the CPU can support. So why would you care about using multiple threads for your game? For starters, if you are processing thousands of elements each step, then you may want to consider a multi-threaded application which can handle those tasks asynchronously. Or maybe you would like to address battery consumption and reduce thermal issues on your mobile device. By utilizing different threads, we can allow the main thread in our CPU to idle, thus using less energy. What is the C-sharp job system? The C-sharp job system is part of a larger ecosystem called DOTS, or the data-oriented tech stack. In this video, we will mainly be focusing on the job system and how you can use it with the traditional game object workflow. In this example, we have a classic implementation of Boyd's, which simulates flocking behavior of birds. What makes Boyd's interesting is that, at a minimum, you do not need any kind of physics to model how members of a flock separate and move together to a destination. Primarily, it's all vector math. Boyd's can be defined with three simple rules, cohesion, separation, and alignment. For each rule, we have to process the position and velocity of every other flock member. If we have 100 members in the flock, then we would have to process them 100 more times, which is 10,000 calculations altogether. In a multi-threaded application, let's say we have four threads available. If we delegate one thread to process four flock members each, then each thread will perform 2,500 calculations for all members. This is much better than a single thread processing 10,000 elements sequentially. The c -sharp job system allows us to implement job structs using interfaces such as iJob, iJob Parallel 4, and iJob Parallel 4 Transform. Each interface has different use cases. iJob allows us to execute a task on an additional single thread, while iJob Parallel 4 and iJob Parallel 4 Transform allows us to utilize many threads to perform a task. All interfaces require us to implement the execute function, which is where we will define the task a thread will perform. While job structs allow you to define units of tasks to execute on different threads, they do come with restrictions. First, you cannot use any kind of managed class or reference types. The job system is specifically designed to work with blittable data, pointers, and specialized containers called native containers. Blittable data. In c -sharp, blittable data is data whose structural representation can be represented in both managed and native memory without any kind of conversion. For example, let's say we needed to work with a C++ library. Certain data types like int, float, and byte can be explicitly represented in both languages without any kind of additional serialization or marshalling. Therefore, we can pass raw data between the two languages without any kind of manipulation. While numerical types in C-sharp are typically blittable, primitive types like car and bool are not because they can be represented differently amongst different languages by size and structure. In our game object voids runner, we utilize native arrays in our void job and batch void job struct to define the input data we want to process and the output data we want to write to. It is important to note that native arrays and containers must be manually disposed of when we are finished with them. We initialize each of our native arrays in the start function to have a persistent allocation and release their memory in the onDisable function when we finish. We assign the source matrices native array to our source field in our void job and bash void job structs. These will be the read-only input positions so we can simulate flocking based on their last known positions. Our other native array, our destination matrices, will be assigned to our destination field, as this is where we will write the updated positions. In our job struct, we explicitly define which field is read-only and which is write-only. This is important such that the job system can deterministically understand what data fields can be accessed in parallel. This technique is known as double buffering, so at any point in time we always safely process complete and known data and not partially updated data. 
We conditionally use the boy job if we set the use single thread field to true. This will let our algorithm run on an additional single thread. If we disable the use single thread field, then we use the batch boy job, which will run our algorithm using multiple threads that are currently available. Typically, for an I job parallel for a job, we schedule by passing in the size of the collection we want to process on, which in this case is the number of flock members we want to process, and the number of elements each thread is responsible for processing. We pass the value of 32 elements, which means that each job is responsible for 32 elements before completing itself and freeing the thread. The average center job uses an I job interface to calculate the average center of the flock so we can move our game object for Cine Machine to follow and look at it in the scene. We want to make use of a pointer so we can pass the written data from our average center job back to our model behavior to assign the position to our game object Boyd's runner's position. This is so we can have our Cine Machine camera follow and look at the general center of our flock. The copy transform job uses an I job parallel for transform that allows us to manipulate our game object's transform data. You typically cannot access and manipulate transform components on a separate thread, but Unity allows you to manipulate transform data through a transform access array. In our start function, we collect all instantiated transform components for each flock member and construct a new transform access array. Finally, we have the copy matrix job, which is used for our double buffering technique. We've already written the entire flock's position directly into our destination matrices native array, but now we need to copy the data back to our source matrices native array. This is so that the next frame, when our jobs run again, we now have completely updated matrices to read from and calculate our flock members' new positions. We chain these jobs together so that the jobs run deterministically. We first want to copy all the positions directly to our transform components, while at the same time calculate the average center of the flock, and figure out the new positions of the flock members should move to. We combine all dependencies together and pass this dependency into our copy matrix job. The copy matrix job requires the destination data to be fully finished and written to by our boy job or batched boy job so we can safely read the data and update our source matrices native array. When using the C-sharp job system, it is important to schedule our jobs early and complete the jobs late. In the beginning of our update loop, we call boydshandle.complete. This ensures that our jobs that we scheduled in the previous frame are completed. We don't want to schedule new jobs if the previous jobs are not completed. We do this because if we call Boyd's handle.complete at the end of our update loop, this will force all of the jobs to complete immediately which yields no performance benefits as we would be blocking our main thread until all of the jobs are completed. We can get an overview of how these jobs run in the profiler. We can access the profiler under Window, Analysis, Profiler. We can see that the boy job takes approximately 10 milliseconds to execute on 200 members. But if we use multiple threads, we can see that for 200 members, each thread takes approximately 4.4 milliseconds each, which is considerably faster than executing boids on a single thread. Although the dots ecosystem is still in development by Unity, we can still leverage the c -sharp job system to parallelize different parts of our game which need them the most. Thanks for watching.